When you're looking at your own process and the things that you're doing, what are some of the framework questions you should ask yourself? What is the goal? How fast do I want to get there? Am I doing stuff that is sustainable? Those are the three big questions. What's going on, everybody? This is Coach Bronson. I've been coaching for over 12 years. I am a nutrition, fitness, and mindset behavior change coach. I work primarily with women over 40. I work with everybody. If anybody has a problem, you want to work with me, I'll work with you. But most of my clientele is women over 40 who are looking to take their journey to the next level. Women who are following a keto or carnivore diet, who have maybe been following it for a while. If you have any questions or things you want to discuss that have to do with fitness, nutrition, mindset, health, quality of life, working through an injury, whatever it may be, anything that I can do to help you move forward in your journey is what I'm here to do. The basics and the foundational elements of nutrition and fitness and habit change, those are the things to focus on. If you're not doing the basics, then don't worry about the specifics, right? Tactics and hacks and shortcuts don't do anything for you long term if you're not doing the basics first. So that is the basic uh, premise of how pretty much everything I work on is. A lot of discussions I have with people in consults or one-on-ones when I'm working through a program with someone is helping them to take a step back from all of the stress and details and complexity that they've been trying to implement and just keep it simple. Like, what are the simple things? We need protein. Okay, just get more protein. Don't worry about how much, just get more than you're getting now. That's a lot easier. What's my lean mass? What's my goal weight? What's this? What's that? Percentage is this? What's that ratio? Just get more protein. That's the bottom line. I don't care how much more, as long as you get more. If it work, starts working for you, then great. You found a good amount. If you need more, then eat more. Like playing around with things within a much simpler context makes the process a lot easier. When you're asking questions or when you're looking at your own process and the things that you're doing, what are some of the framework questions you should ask yourself? What is the goal? How fast do I want to get there? And am I doing stuff that is um, sustainable? Those are the three big questions, right? Can I keep doing doing? If you can keep doing a five by five, two times a week with an occasional weighted vest walk throughout during the week as well. So three, three days of activity a week, that's heavy and intense and giving you some results. Then that sounds fine. I don't know if there's something you could do to get better, the question is, is it work? If what you're doing is helping you reach your goals, then there's nothing. There is nothing that I could give you that would be because it's helping you reach your goals. If you're reaching your goals, you're doing what you said you wanted to do. You're getting where you wanted to go. Now, if you're trying to get to a certain specific place and it's not happening, then we can evaluate how things are going. Maybe you need three days of actual weight training. Maybe five by five isn't the program for you. Maybe you need something that's more conjugate based to get some accessory work and some variation and rest in what you're doing. Instead of doing a weighted desk walk occasionally, maybe you should do it consistently once a week. There's a whole bunch of other things. You know, if, if I'm working with you as a client, I'm also asking how much you're eating, how much you're sleeping, what's your work life look like, what's your relationships like, what's your schedule throughout the day, what time do you get up in the morning, when do you eat your meals? Like, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into that discussion. So every is a aspect of overall stress load in general. So your recovery from your workouts may have absolutely nothing to do with your workouts. They may have to do with your sleep. They may have to do with you eating enough. They may have to do with you being overly stressed on your job or in a bad relationship or dealing with money situations or health issues or something else. So there's a lot of things that are going on adding to the overall stress load of your body. So basic stress management is probably the first thing that I would look at. Outside of that, the next thing I would look at would be your actual training program. How many days a week are you training? Are you training too hard? Are you hitting the wrong things, uh, the, the same things too many times in a week? Are you doing high intensity training? Are you doing a lot of cardio? Are you doing mostly strength training? Like there's a lot of questions about training, but in general, keeping the training within what we call your maximum recovery volume. You should train to a point that you can recover in a reasonable amount of time to do that type of work again. If you're just training, 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 and you're never, never giving your body time to recover, then that could be a problem. And that can build up over time. You may do that for three, four, six, eight months and not seem to have a problem and then run into a freaking wall and be like, why do I feel like crap? I can't recover. I can't work out what's going. And that could just be because you've been overtraining for a long period of time and your body finally just gave up. Take a look at that 
And then obviously nutrition is the second, the third thing, eat your face off. You got to eat to recover guys. One of the biggest mistakes, one of the biggest mistakes that comes from the calories in, calories out, energy management mindset, the fat loss mindset, the traditional, everything we've heard about energy expenditure, the habits that I see that I have to break people up a lot is changing how much they eat based on their activity level. I didn't work out today, so I'm not going to eat as much. Oh, I work out today, so I'm going to eat more. Stop doing that. When you're not working out is when you need the most protein because that's when your body's actually doing building. Eat your food every day. If you're working out or not, it doesn't matter. Get your food in every day. You are always in some type of muscle protein synthesis. This whole thought process and idea that muscle protein synthesis only happens when you eat a bolus of 30 proteins or more or when you exercise is bullcrap, guys. If I eat a meal of protein, that protein is in my body and digesting for eight plus hours. So if I'm eating regularly, I eat enough. Even if I'm fasting, I still have protein in my body that's being utilized. Even if I do intermittent fasting, it's still in there. I don't eat and then I'm done, right? I eat and then my body is processing when I ate for eight hours through my next meal and when I sleep, whatever, whenever it may be. This idea that we only have muscle protein synthesis happening when we eat or exercise is skewing things up and messing things up. The other thing is muscle protein synthesis post-exercise can occur up to 72 hours after the exercise event. So if you lift today, your body is still processing protein and building muscle up to 72 hours after the after you did that. Work. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's going to help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube, go to bodyconfidentbook.com. Increasing your physical ability in areas you're not used to increasing them is correcting movement patterns or dysfunctions that are causing pain or discomfort during the process of correction. It's important when you're starting a new program to take your time. You may need to cut back on other activities while you get your body used to the new activities before you reintroduce those again and kind of see how things balance out. Often I see people going through learning how to squat properly and then wondering why their knees or their back or whatever hurt all the time. It's because they're using muscles, they're engaging parts of their body they never used properly before. So there's an aspect of discomfort that comes with that in the growth and the activation of those systems. It's very likely that there's nothing wrong per se, but doing these other things are potentially helping you create a better overall fitness profile and functional profile, but that process isn't always comfortable. If you're concerned with what's happening and how that feels, then I would highly recommend that you find a sports physical therapist an exercise, physical therapist, sports performance, athletic, whatever in your area. And just tell, t don't tell them there's anything wrong. Just say, Hey, I'm starting a program. I'm noticing some things. Could you do a movement review and see how I move? This is what I used to do. This is what I'm used to doing. This is what I'm doing now. I'm noticing some things. Could you just see what you think is going on and get an evaluation? It shouldn't be super expensive. You're not asking for treatment. You just want a movement you want your movement analyzed to see what's going on. There's a whole bunch of stuff to take a look at there. The human body and the musculature and the mechanical connections between joints and bones and muscles can get very complicated and they are all interdependent. So taking your time and getting evaluated would probably be my first two recommendations. Is it better to have a leg day, upper body day, or a full body workout day? First off, what's your goal? What are you trying to do? There is no better because better is only determined by, is it working? If your goal is to get full body functional movement in on a regular basis in a short amount of time, because you're busy, you only have maybe 30 minutes to work a few times a week, then a full body weight resisted high intensity interval training type of class could be great or program could be great. If you have time and you're focused more on specifically getting stronger, building muscle, and trying to improve in, say, a basic lifting techniques, then splitting things up into an upper, a lower, or a front and back, and arms, 
or something like that, some kind of bodybuilding split, as we call it, or straight split. That could work as well if you have the time and the equipment and the resources to do that. So it's really about what are you trying to do and how much time do you have? What equipment do you have? Where are you working? Do you know what you're doing? What's your experience level? All those things. Hey there, did you know that I have a free community on Discord? If you go to discord.coachbronson.com, you can join my community, you can meet other people, you can engage in a group of individuals who are all searching for and having success in finding their context and the solutions that will work best for them. Hop yourself in there, discord.coachbronson.com. See you soon.